Welcome back to Sold Out Sports Talk on AFR Talk. Of course, you can join us every Saturday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central Time. Streaming live on AFR.net. Podcasts available at AFR.net iPhone, Droid phone platform. So if you're out there can't catch us live at night on Saturdays, you're cutting the yard, you're uh, heading on a trip somewhere, you got your uh, iPhone or Droid, you got your whatever you need out there, you can hear the program. And, of course, our guest is Joe Ehrman. He is the author of Inside Out Coaching, former NFL pro and USFL pro for over 13 years. And uh, this guy has some great ideas, uh, not only about uh, helping fathers and helping coaches, but understanding where our kids are at today and why it's important that our kids understand uh, not only their future, uh, but the great opportunities that they have and if we'll just uh, give them the tools that they need. And uh, one of the things I wanted to correct is is if you want to talk to Joe and you have questions for him, parents, or anyone out there that wants to, to get in contact with him, you can go at joe at coachforamerica.com. That's his email address. And uh, let me just correct, if you want to get his book and you need to, uh, I highly recommend it, Inside Out Coaching. Uh, you can go to his website at coachforamerica.com. That's coach, F-O-R, America.com, www.coachforamerica.com. So go get his book. came out August 2nd, Simon & Schuster. And uh, this, this book is not your, your run-of-the-mill you know, coaching technique book. This is a guy who tells you his story, uh, who understands what it is not only to play but to coach, to be a father, uh, understands the pitfalls of, of sports and also the beauty of sports. And uh, in this, he gives some great inspirational information and philosophy on coaching, as well as giving some great uh, encouragement to parents and to leaders uh, about how we can help this next generation of kids. And uh, Joe, one of the things that we try to do on this program is we got a lot of parents that are out there, and, and one of the things that I see a lot is this generation of parents, many of them are unchurched. Um, the landscape of religion and of Christianity in this country has changed quite a bit because of some of the things we've spoken about, about not offering uh, spiritual alternatives in the schools, about that being eliminated. Uh, so we have a lot of parents out there that are not equipped, uh, that are looking for help. And in your estimation, what is the what are what are a few things that parents can be looking for in terms of helping not only their kids to be more involved in extracurricular activities, but also understanding the purpose for extracurricular activities. Yeah, well, well, first I would say this. I don't consider sports extracurricular. I think they ought to be considered co-curricular. Extracurricular implies that it's something that begins at the end of the educational day. I would say that sports field ought to be the last classroom of the day. Or there is where social emotional uh, development takes place. You're helping young persons, uh, people to identify their own identity. Uh, uh, you're building moral, ethical principles there. Sports programs ought to be conducted in the same way that education is conducted. So really, we need to have an understanding. When parents parents need to know three fundamental things. The uh, first thing they need to know is who their child is, and not in some kind of anecdotal way. Uh, not every kid's going to Princeton. Not every kid's going to play Division I uh, uh, football, uh, sports. You need to understand what makes your kid tick, what tickles them, and what ticks them off, uh, and make sure they're in an appropriate program. Second thing is that every parent needs to understand what excess baggage they're bringing into the lives of their own children. A lot of adults have unfinished business when it comes to sport. Well, you can't bring that. Let your child develop their own based on their own passion and interests. Uh, children aren't wired to just play sports. They want to do computers and dance and drama and debate, and they ought to have the freedom to do that. Third thing is this. If you go to a sports program, they can't tell you what their purpose is, what their values they haven't written out, playing time, uh, what the expected outcomes in. You need to move your child to another program if you have that freedom because you're rolling dice with your child's self-esteem. Uh, the fundamental responsibility of every youth and high school coach is to elevate every young person's sense of who and what they are, their value, their worth, and human potential, irregardless of that athletic performance. So you want to make sure as parents you're protecting your child. And the first rule of every coach is to do no harm. Uh, we have tremendous harm being done to the psyches of young boys and girls based on this performance-based uh, uh, when it all costs culture. Uh, the great myth in America today is that sports builds character. That's not true in a when it all costs culture. 
A sports doesn't build character unless some coach intentionally teaches it, models, nurtures, and trains it in your children. That's what parents need to be looking for, the quality of the program. Sports are never a means to an end. They're, all, they're an end to themselves. They're always a means to an end. And that end has to be to the moral uh, uh, development of your young child. Joe Ehrman is the author of Inside Out Coaching, and you can get it at uh, you can get it at CoachForAmerica.com. And uh, one of the things that's concerned me, Joe, in the schools today, as I talk to administrators and teachers and coaches, as you do, is this, as you said, about extracurricular activities. That you know, they, they seem to think that we need to send our kids to school for longer periods of time, more more time throughout the year. I mean, now these kids are getting out uh, in late. You know, many of them in late May and June or mid-June and then going back to school in August. Um, and still, they're, they're talking about the quality of education not being what it needs to be. And then secondly, uh, because of that, uh, money is short with the school, so what do they do? They cut out sports programs, theater programs, after-school programs. And then, because the PE is being cut, you've got a type 2 diabetes problem in the schools that did not exist when you and I were in school where you have to actually spend government money to do advertising that you should exercise for one hour. And we wonder why these kids are struggling when we think we need to just feed the math, English, and, and history and forget about their physical fitness, which you and I both know as former professional athletes, uh, feeds your ability mentally to be sharp and your ability, your ability to feel better about yourself. Uh, address that. Well, I, I, you know, Socrates once said the two most important venues to create a just society were the symphony hall and the gymnasium. Both of them are about the integration of the mind, the body, the spirit, creating this symphony of life connected to others. Uh, you know, this reduction of sports and music, uh, well, that's because they misunderstand the educational qualities. If you make sports co-curricular, You'll add an hour or two to the classroom experience every single day. So it's, it's the math teacher. You know, the math teacher has a responsibility to move every their student from point A to point B during a semester. In the math class, you can't just teach to the best five or ten or eleven students. Your responsibility is to allow every student to be the best they're capable of becoming. In the math class, you wouldn't tolerate a math teacher grabbing, swearing, screaming, shouting, uh, using sarcasm or shaming because they got an equation wrong. Why in the world do we think we can put that whistle on a math teacher, put them on an athletic arena, and then let them coach in a way that violates the whole fundamental foundations of education and the development of young people? We've created this sports league that is about sports elitism. It excludes all these kids that are in desperate need of exercise, proper nutrition, a place to belong, a place to be understood. So when we created our high school program, uh, you automatically made the varsity when you were a junior, irregardless of athletic performance or ability. Every kid wants to have a place where they're known and accepted for who and what they are. So we've got to have a radical rethinking about the role of sports and music. Those things are educational. Uh, in this win-at-all-costs kind of high-stakes testing in America education today, all the social-emotional development has been thrown out of the classroom. That's got to get picked up on the athletic field and the arena for the healthy development of children, teaching them how to become citizens that are going to help lead this country. Joe Ehrman, our guest on Sold Out Sports Talk on AFR Talk. He's the uh, author of Inside Out Coaching, and he's telling us some very important thing, parents, today, just things to think about with your children and also to think about in terms of the school you send your child to. And, the, and when you have these teachers and coaches meetings, some of the uh, subjects that need to be brought up. And uh, you can get this book at uh, coachforamerica.com. Um, in final moments, Joe, um, you know, being an evangelist, uh, obviously, I believe that, you know, it's just not enough to say no to whatever it is. I mean, when you go into school programs and you say, you know, no to drugs or no to alcohol or no to steroids, um, you have to send them to a place, a positive alternative. And, and you've been talking about the mindset set up of kids. But, uh, you know, I look at the church today, and I, and I, and I think that we've dropped the ball uh, on that end as well because uh, churches today do have facilities. There are sports programs at the churches that don't cost money. Many of these parents today having to pay for programs that you and I played free, even football and basketball and things that 
that cost money that parents can't afford. Um, what is the role of the church right now in terms of the way things have gone in denying God in the schools? Well, uh, you know, I, I think the sad reality is many of these church-based um, programs, parochial schools, uh, they've never integrated their theology with their education and their teaching. They've certainly never graded, integrated it into uh, sports as well. You know, uh, you know, they, the law of the land is separation of church and state. Uh, I've been in pastoral ministry 25 years. I coach in a secular school. I don't have the freedom uh, to bring the verbiage of Christ, but that doesn't mean I don't bring the presence of Christ. doesn't mean I don't bring all of the values of my own faith and understanding. Uh, I think sports are a way to build God's kingdom. God's kingdom always flows out of the holiness of God. God's holy not only in his character and essence, but in his conduct. The kingdom is built on God's love and respect for all human beings, about standards of righteousness and justice. Uh, that's what needs to be taught. That's what needs to be integrated. I think the church has, uh, has become a place where people want to be comfortable on Sundays. They don't want to be challenged with the Word of God and integrated into their lives. So I think, you know, I, I think all the barriers for reaching the world for Christ, they're not out in the world. They reside inside the church. And somewhere, uh, you know, we've got growing crisis of biblical illiteracy. We've got this culturally uh, adapted uh, uh, gospel. And somewhere the church has got to uh, stand up and... Uh, or train and teach people and fulfill its proper role. It's not about popularity. It's not about church growth or building their budget counts or how many bodies you got in there. It's really about creating disciples. And then we've got to teach people how to go into that naked public square, bring the presence. If I don't name the name Jesus, doesn't mean the power and the presence of Christ is not going to be there touching and transforming hearts and lives. So I think often uh, too many Christians are good at closing doors. We need to walk in and keep the doors open and need to be uh, kind of wise as, uh, uh, you know, uh, as serpents and doves and understand uh, this platform. There's no difference between secular and sacred. Everything is sacred to God. Joe, I tell you what, it has been a real pleasure to have you in here. And we continue to pray for you and your work that you're doing. And uh, before I let you go, let's just say this. His book, Inside Out Coaching, a must if you're a parent. Get this book. If you're a coach, get this book at coachforamerica.com. And also for his seminars, which he can come into your schools, where he can come into your corporation, he can talk about these principles, you need to go to coachforamerica.com and find out more about how you can access Joe Ehrman. Joe, God bless you. Thanks for coming in, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Well, thanks for sharing your platform with me. Thank you.